Temptation. What is it? What is the difference between temptation versus sin? And six ways to avoid it. Now, have you ever encountered temptation in your life? Be honest now. Were you able to resist the temptation? Or did you cave into the temptation and it caused you to sin? More importantly, what's the fine line between temptation and sin? Well, stay tuned to find out more. Now, you probably may be wondering, well, what's this priest here on YouTube asking me about my struggle with sin and temptations? Well, let's explore that topic a little bit more. But first of all, we have to define what temptation is. Now, here's my favorite definition of what a temptation is. An enticement to sin. And in case you're wondering what enticement means, think of it as inducement or an allurement, a literally pulling, if you will, towards sin. Now, I made a video series on how to make a good confession, and in it, I explain the difference between temptation and sin. You can search for it somewhere around, or you can go on studymyfaith.com. Because sometimes we lump the idea of temptation and sin together. But remember, temptation always lead to sin, if we're not careful, but they're not the same. Let me just give you an example to illustrate this point. You see, I have a friend named Bill. See, Bill was an alcoholic in his youth. He would drink and drink and drink. In fact, Bill nearly drank himself to death at one point. And finally, one day, he ended up in the hospital with liver problems, and the doctor told him, hey, you know, you have to change. If you want to live, you need to stop drinking. Otherwise, for sure, you will die in a year or less. And that was a wake-up call for Bill. So he had to change. So after the leave, leaving the hospital and then checking himself into uh, you know, a place where he could get help, an, on, an, an alcoholic anonymous program, Bill persisted and wanted to do everything he possibly could to stop drinking. Now, you know what the most difficult part for him was? To say no to all of his old drinking buddies. It was difficult to resist, as Bill shared, but he was determined. He could not walk this journey of being sober alone, so he needed help from others, from the community, and from God. So fast forward many years later, I and a few other people, we were out to dinner with Bill, and we were at a nice restaurant, and I remember some of us had fine wine, and of course, you know, we, we got a few bottles of those. And very shortly when the wine came out, Bill stepped out and he said he had to go use the restroom. Well, sometime later, when the food came out, we didn't see him. You know, and after a while, he came back and, you know, he wanted to offer him some wine as well. And we could tell something was not right. Something felt kind of wrong, you know, with Bill. And we asked him, is there something wrong? But later on, we came to understand Bill was struggling. You see, he was resisting the temptation to drink. And we could tell too after some time, he was struggling. He was trying to fight this urge, this temptation. And as you can see, we're all devils here trying to tempt Bill to drink. You see, my point is this. The closer we are to temptation, the more it will control us, the more it will dominate us, the more it will allure us into sin. Therefore, we must stay away from temptation. It's like playing with fire. You play around with fire long enough and you will get burned. And then we wonder, well, how did this happen? What did I do wrong, et cetera, et cetera, right? Let me give you another example. And honestly, tell me what you think about this. Let's say you have an addiction to gambling. And after struggling for some time and with help from others, you manage to overcome these temptations. Now, a few years down the line, and you're out and about shopping for a house, and you decide to buy a house right across the street from a casino. 
Now, let me ask you, how do you think that's going to play out? What do you think is going to happen? It's pretty clear, no? So now that you understand temptation, I want to mention one very important point, one more. And that point is this. There is a fine line between temptation and sin. And that fine line between temptation and sin is called the consent of the will. You see, you have the intellect, that is our mind, our ability to reason, our ability to think. And we also have the will, the willpower to do it. Our mind helps us to recognize that this act is wrong. And then when we consent to it with our will, when we are accepting of it, acting on our thoughts, in other words, then that will be sin. Right? If there's no consent of the will, there is no sin yet. Make sense? Now, I have to tell you, as a canon lawyer who worked in a marriage tribunal, the consent of the will is actually very complicated. For example, is this person completely free, right? Or um, is there a psychic disturbance? Is there a particular situation in particular that inhibits this consent of the will? Is this person capable of consent of the will, et cetera, et cetera? Now, we can go very deep, but yeah, we don't want to go there. Let's keep it on a basic level. So in order for you to resist temptation, which will lead you to sin, you need to do a few things. And I'd like to offer you six different points. Number one is to recognize your weaknesses. This literally challenges you, firstly, to understand yourself. Look deeply within and be honest about it. If you're denying your weaknesses, you're only making the problem worse. You see, the friend I was sharing with you about, Bill, who was struggling with temptation, he had to confront that. And as well, you know, our friend's struggle and temptation, our struggle is very different than ours. Our friend's weaknesses can be very different. Recognize your weaknesses then, your temptations. That's number one. Number two, how strong are you at self-control? This is a question of resisting temptation. You need the cardinal virtues of temperance, that is moderation, and prudence, that is practical wisdom. I'll probably make a video about uh, that someday, but you know, temptation brings you false pleasures. You feel good now, but much more pain coming soon. It allures you into a trap. And I hate to use these two examples, but they demonstrate the point very well. The first example has to do with mice. Imagine if you have mice in your house, right? What can you do? Well, you can get a cat or you can solve the problem by getting some mouse traps, right? You know those mouse traps? Now, think about the mouse trap. There's an enticement by offering the mouse something. For example, a piece of cheese. And then the mouse goes into it, gets a cheese, and then it slams on the mouse head and it dies. Oh, poor mouse. Or, you know, a second example, if you go fishing, you always have to use bait, right? In order for you to catch a fish, you have to have a bait. And what is a bait? Well, basically, it's an enticement to get the fish to eat it. And as a fish eats it, you fish it, right? So these are two examples talking about enticement. And the question is for number two, how good are you at self-control? How strong are you? That's important to think about. Now, the third one is about avoiding temptation or the occasion to be tempted. Let me give you a perfect example. Let's say you are married, husband and wife, and then you go to work and at your workplace, there's this awesome man or woman who is your coworker, right? And you're forced to work with this person. And this person attracts you so much. After working about a week, you start having emotional feelings. What do you do? Well, number one, you recognize and acknowledge the feeling. Don't pretend it doesn't exist. Number two, you may probably be tempted to cheat on your spouse. Figuring out, for example, well, you know, she won't know, who's going to know, etc. But avoid the awkward situation by not flirting with this person 
Or better yet, don't act like you are available at all, right? Avoid temptation as much as possible. Just make sure, make it clear that you're not interested. And perhaps, hopefully, your wedding ring would be a good reminder for you to do this. So avoid temptation. Now imagine if you take the opposite approach instead. You know, you're tempted and you figure, oh, nobody knows, it's okay. I'll just play around. It's, uh, it's just something simple anyways. Imagine, eventually it leads you closer and closer and closer and closer, and if you're not careful, to sin. So avoid temptation as much as you can. Number four, important, don't reason with temptation. You know why? Because you'll find all the reasons to entertain the temptations, which will lead you to sin. Again, be very honest with yourself here and your own struggles. Just don't try to self-justify saying, well, you know, I deserve this because I did this, because I worked hard all week, because I did X, Y, and Z, and now I deserve whatever I want. Don't reason with temptation. Let me give you an example. Let's say you've been struggling with your faith for some time. And your New Year resolution, for example, let's just say, is you want to make it to Sunday Mass each Sunday because you haven't done that in a while. You tell all your Catholic friends and they support you. And after going, being uh, good about it for a month, you start reasoning, figuring out, well, you know, I can use this extra hour for exercise. I can use this extra hour for movie. I can use this extra hour for sleeping in, et cetera, et cetera. You know, maybe some other reasoning you can say is, well, the music is bad. The, uh, the preaching is not great. Uh, church is dirty, et cetera. You come up with all these excuses. And, you know, you look around and you look for reasons that will support your thesis. And you figure, oh, you know what? Because X doesn't go, then I don't have to. Because for example, you know, just example, my husband said it doesn't go, well, why do I have to go, right? All these questions come into your mind and you start doubting. So do you see the temptation here? Don't reason with temptation. Because when you reason with temptation, you're going to fail. And by the way, go to Mass every Sunday. Yes, your relationship with God helps in overcoming temptation, which comes to point number five. You need a good prayer life and a good spiritual life. Your relationship with God helps to overcome temptation. Pray. Prayer life is the gateway into the spiritual life. If you lack prayer or if you lack a personal relationship with Jesus, understand that you're opening yourself up into a world of temptation. And if you cannot determine the values that tell you what is right and what is wrong, it's going to be clear that the devil's got you by the neck, so to speak. False lies is the devil's key, which will lead you to sin. Remember that, that's very important. This topic is very long to explore too, so I'll make another video about it later. But I encourage you, to find a support group, find a good spiritual director to help you to build your spiritual life, your prayer life, your relationship with Jesus. This is really important. And then next, number six, is you need a good support system. Family, friends, the community of faith, like your church, for example, others that can help you resist temptation as much as you can others who are like-minded. And no, granted, sometimes they can work against you, right? If they don't agree with you, etc. But find support from people who love you and who are willing to be there for you and who are willing to support you. Support group is really important. You know, all of us are humans and we need good affirmation from others saying, you're doing good, things are going well, you're good, so to speak. All these things are important, okay? So remember, let's recap. So number one, recognize our weaknesses. Number two, how strong are we at self-control? Number three, avoid temptation and the occasion to be tempted. Number four, don't reason with temptation. Number five, prayer life. And then finally, number six, a good support system. Now, I know what you may be thinking. 
This is much easier said than done, right? It's easier to say it, but putting it practically into speaking, it's very difficult. It's a challenge, which is why we all fall into sin. But when we fall into sin, you know, there's also the sacrament of reconciliation to help us, to reconcile us with God and with others. This sacrament helps us to build resistance and helps us to resist temptation because of our nature, our inclination to sin. Well, you heard the saying, what doesn't destroy you will make you stronger. So believe that. And also too, turn to the saints. The saints are good examples. They are good testimonies for us about how to live a holy life. Because you see, all the saints struggle with temptation too. And as they go closer and closer and closer to sanctity, they face even more and more and more challenges, right? And more temptations. So that's very important. And then finally, I want to leave you with one final comment. And that is, take a look at this cross here. Realize that Christ loved us and that the cross is the greatest demonstration, the greatest example of God's love for us. As we listen to God's words of love for us here in this cross here, behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. God tells us that he loves us and that he willingly forgives us our sins. Come to the Lord if you're struggling with sin and temptation and ask God to help you to grow like the saints in holiness.